In this episode, we're going to be making some pilot holes. This is one I've made before using a 3D printed front face, but this time we're going to be completely building from scratch. First of all, grab some foam core. And you want this to be about one and a half, two inches high. And you want to cut a slant so that you have a slope on either side. So cut a hole in the side section for that. Then grabbing some small pieces of balsa wood, trimming them down to size. These are going to be the supporting vertical beams. And gluing them to the face plate. Next, using the same length and width, cutting two slants in each of the beams to produce some cross beams. And grabbing another piece to make a larger beam going over to the edge corner. Then beveling any of the overlap down so it all sits flush. Now we want the beams and the front features to stick out a bit, so they don't need to be completely flat with the foam core. Then grabbing some thinner pieces of balsa, we're going to make the window frame. I'm using PVA instead of hot glue for this, so I have some more kind of malleability to work with. And then making sure with the inside of the foam core, you also put some balsa wood in there. Grabbing some blue styrofoam, going to cut some fairly thin widths out. And these are going to be some stones along the base of the walls. So rubbing some texture on using a tin foil ball. And then we're going to grab a sculpting tool and press some kind of brick width shapes into it. Now this will cause it to curve, but that shouldn't be an issue. And then connecting them between the beams on the faceplate. Trim any excess where it goes over the edge. Then we're going to grab another piece of balsa wood. This one's fairly thin. We're going to cut a rectangular shape out of it. And this is going to be the trickiest part of the build, getting the door round. So we're going to start trimming the corners off and then just working around every time trimming the corners down finer and finer until we get to a close enough round shape. Now it doesn't need to be perfect because it will have some cover up on the edges with stones, but we're also going to press the kind of timber plank shape using the edge of a sculpting tool. And you want to be careful not to break through the balsa here, it is quite fragile. Then gluing that to the faceplate as well. Next, grabbing some more styrofoam, we're going to make the stone edging for the door. I found the easiest way to do this was two kind of L-shaped pieces and then filling in the bottom with some wedge shapes. And then carefully trimming down so it all looks a bit more rounded out. I did attempt to do a completely circular kind of uh, stone frame in one and it did not turn out well. Then we are going to glue another piece of wood. This was a coffee stirrer and this is going to sit on top of the faceplate. Now we are going to fill in the plaster on the faceplate, so we're going to mix some very watered down sculptor mold. And this is going to be very liquid and we're just going to use that to fill in where you can see the foam core. So this will fill in the gap between the stones and the back plate if you had one. And you can always use this to cover any mistakes if you've made any. And then while that's still wet, I'm just taking the chance to push a few styrofoam bricks into it. So you get a bit of a hint at the underlying brickwork. That's the nice thing about making kind of hobbit homes. You can be fairly haphazard or neat with the architecture. There's a lot of difference in how they could be built. Also depends if you want to go for the film version or the book version. So gluing a piece of clear plastic to the back of the window and then connecting the two parts of the front face together at a 90 degree angle. Then 
we are going to mount that on a foam core base. Uh, this was literally just an oval that I cut out earlier. And then we want to grab some polystyrene. You should have some of this left if you ever ordered anything online. And we are just going to use that to form the bulk of the hill behind the front plate. So I did this by just gluing large amounts of it together on the back and then using a knife to bevel it and trim it down into more of a rounded shape. Again, you can be quite messy here. This will all be covered with sculptor mold. So this time we're going to mix up a much thicker batch of sculptor mold. And we just want to cover the entire thing in front and top, just all around. We don't want any of the polystyrene showing. And we're going to plug any gaps where the foam core can be seen. And it's ideal if you go for a bit of an overhang. But that depends on the integrity of the sculptor mold. So while that is curing, making a small chimney. So grabbing two square pieces of styrofoam and trimming the corners off each of them. Then with the sculpting tool we're just going to push a hole in the middle and rotate it to hollow out the top part. Then pressing bricks into the outside. This is basically the same technique I also use to put some paving stones and make a path coming out from the doorway through the garden. Ideally you want to do that while the sculptor mold is still wet so you can push it in. Then once you've carved some stones into the outside, just going to grab a tin foil ball, roll that all over and give it some stone texture and do the same for the underneath piece. and then we want to glue the two pieces together. And then glue it on top of the piece at a jaunty angle. Next, we're going to mix up some PVA and coarse flock, and we're going to coat the edges of the hill and all over the front where the sort of garden is. And we only really want to do this where there might be dirt showing through the grass. And once that's dry, we are going to coat the entire thing in black gesso. Then mixing white, black and brown, we're going to make a sort of mid-tone earth colour. And we're going to coat the entire thing with that. It doesn't matter if you don't go into all the recesses, but anywhere, again, where there'll be dirt showing through, we ideally want to hit that with this colour. But we also want to have it underneath where the static grass will be. Then, mixing a pale sand, we're going to apply that to where all the plaster is showing through. Then, going to paint the wooden beams brown, as well as the door. And with a mixture of that brown and pale sand, we're going to hit the entire front garden of the piece. And then we're going to hit the stonework with a mid-grey. Now we're going to take a mixture of PVA and we're going to water that down. So about one part water, two parts PVA. And we are going to paint that over the entire piece after we put it in the lid of a shoebox. So you want to hit everywhere you want grass to be on this. So the entire back portion of the hill and most of the front garden. I'm leaving a patch where I want it to be a vegetable plot and around where the stone path is.
once that's all been coated, we are going to take our static grass applicator and we are going to put some static grass into the cup and make sure the wire is connected to the mesh at the top. Now, I recommend doing this step before you put the batteries in. It is surprising how much two AA batteries can hurt you. So with the applicator armed and live, we are going to start pouring static grass over it. We want to make sure we have the connecting wire touching the piece. That will help the grass to stand upright. And we just want to hit everywhere. This might take two, even three coats just to get good angles. You can always go back and add more. Just pour the excess off, shake it out, put it back in the cup and hit it again. And make sure you don't touch the mesh at the top and you do not touch the end of the wire while the button is live. If you wanted to, you could take a lighter shade of green and put that just on the top of the piece to simulate lighting. But once that's dried and we've shaken off the excess, we are going to grab our clump foliage and we are going to put it around the front of the piece. Now you could put them on top as well. Do whatever you want. I'm not your dad. So I find it's most effective if you put it at the base of the wall and then you work outwards from there. And that helps you to get a sort of more natural kind of look to it. But also varying colors, but keeping them within the same kind of color palette, that always helps. So I've got a few kind of white, yellow colors, keeping to more of like a warm palette, I guess. So grabbing a small plastic knob, we are going to attach that to the door with super glue. And once that is dry, we are going to go in and give it a light coat of brass paint. And there is also a stage where you might want to paint the door a different color a red or a green or something. Add an angry hobbit model. And there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video. Bye bye.